Good evening, parents, and welcome to Back to School Night 2009. As you can see here, we're presenting a little bit differently this year, and that's because we wanted to take you on a virtual tour to show you what your children experience in our technology education classes here at Amherst Middle School. So fasten your seatbelts, and here we go. Hello, my name is Bruce Karras, one of your child's technology teachers. In seventh grade, we will be making and racing the favorite CO2 cars. Before students go back to the workshop, though, they start off with a unit of ruler reading for accuracy for their projects. Next, students practice the design process by researching different designs on the computer, then mechanically sketching the thumbnails and rough sketches and progressing towards a working drawing. Next, they transfer the drawing onto a wooden blank to be machined. Along the way, we have units on aerodynamics, friction, how to safely use both hand and power tools, wood preparation, and finally applying the finish to their cars. When completed, these cars can go as fast as 30 to 40 miles an hour. Last, we videotape the races and hallways with students as commentators to be shown later on in morning announcements. In eighth grade, we start off with an energy unit. Students learn about the different energy sources, focusing primarily on wind energy. We start by brainstorming both constant and variables about wind turbine blades. Next, we discuss blade shapes, lengths, widths, materials, angle of attack, and gearing. We then break into small groups and set them to build the best set of wind turbines that generate the most amount of electricity. In the first test, the groups are allowed only to change one variable. After testing, they come back together to compare what each group has found. With that new information, the groups go back into the shop with the understanding that they can now modify any of the variables. The groups compete for the highest voltage produced by the second set of blades. Finally, the sets are required to write up and graph their findings. So, Mr. Karras, how am I doing? Okay, next we'll go to the rink. The past summer, I built this table with the intention of students having fun building battle bots while learning engineering techniques. First, students will calculate different gear ratios to obtain the maximum power for their bot, while also considering wheel diameters, shapes, friction, torque of motors, multiplying forces, and soldering techniques. Then each student will go into the shop, use that information to build their own bot. Hopefully, through the trial and learn method, their bot will be able to maneuver around quickly, but still have enough control to score goals. They will be working individually, but paired up in teams to see who can win the AMS Stanley Cup Challenge. And next, to Mr. Z for his rotation. Now you can see the joys of live presentations. Hello, I'm Rob Zdrojewski, one of your child's three technology teachers. In seventh grade, our first assignment is the MePage project. Students learn about digital photography and create a collage page all about themselves on the computer. Now how about a question? Who thinks that this is a live presentation? If you take a look over here in the green screen TV studio, you can give me a friendly wave hello. All right, next is our structural engineering unit in seventh grade. This is where students design, build, and test wooden trusses to see who can be the most cost-efficient engineer. Using a 3D software program, students design their virtual trusses and then build small models out of balsa wood. We then compare their strength to how much money it costs to build them. And now in eighth grade, I teach digital video production. Students will be using green screen technology with Adobe's visual communicator software, just like I'm doing right now, to make it look like they are presenting from just about anywhere in the world. They will experience the entire process of video creation, from writing scripts to editing video and recording in the TV studio here that I built. Now these projects will then be used within our live morning newscasts, and you can see them anytime online at amherstechtv.org, and you can watch our live at 905 morning shows, which is a great way for parents to stay informed of school events. And finally, in eighth grade, we explore the world of LEGO robotics technology. Students work in teams to design and program LEGO robots that move about our classroom. Careful there, Bruce. We end with a final head-to-head -head competition where each class period tries to get the best robot race times. 
Parents are invited to watch this final competition in class as well. Well, that's it for my rotation. Next, students will rotate to Mr. Curtis. And Bruce, you better get in here because you are next. Whew. Well, I made it. Hi, I'm Bruce Curtis. I would like to thank you all for being here tonight. In seventh grade, the students will focus on two units of study. The first assignment is a sideboard project. In this unit, they will learn about series and parallel circuits, resistors, LEDs, schematics, circuits, components, and of course, soldering. Hydraulics is our next unit of study. Here they will learn about Pascal's law, force multiplication factors between cylinders, and many component parts associated with hydraulics. Our project will be the use of a hydraulic arm. This arm has an electromagnet attached to the end, which ties our electronics unit and our hydraulics unit together. The culminating event is a team competition using the hydraulics arm. In eighth grade, our unit of study is computer-aided design. Using a 3D parametric solid modeling software called SolidWorks, students will learn about front, top, and right side views. They will construct 3D features based models of parts given to them in isometric form. Once designed, they will be able to revolve that part on the computer screen. Our project for this unit will be the Amherst A-Clock. Students will first design the clock in SOLIDWORKS and then construct the Amherst A-Clock using woodworking tools. This clock is made from poplar and walnut with a quartz inset timepiece. However, due to the cost of the clock inset, we will require a $3 lab fee. Information about this will be going home to you at a later date. Last but not least, I would like to talk about Technology Club. This club is open to all 7th and 8th grade students. It's a hands-on, advanced woodworking club where we further develop the skills obtained in technology class. Past projects have been the Amherst Day Clock, Checker Boards, Amherst Day Cutting Boards, Adirondack Chairs, Fold Up TV Trays, and last year's project was the Chinese Checker Board. This year's project is backed by overwhelming popular demand. We'll be constructing the Adirondack Chair. We'll start meeting just after the holiday recess. Have your sons and daughters watch the morning announcements for the exact times and schedules that we will be meeting. Well, that's it for us. Thanks again for coming tonight, and enjoy the uh, rest of your evening.